Hey, hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the pop-up Think on Purpose Action Hour. I am Becky Plautz, your host, and we're in the mastermind part of this hour. We have a couple minutes here before we go to intentions and something that has been coming for, through for me um, is, you know, the question, who am I? And I want to go in a deeper thought process because um, the question, who am I? What comes to mind for you? Okay. Think about that put it in the chat, be engaging in here. Um, who are you? What is the story of who you are? And, you know, like how did, how did who you are lead you to the moment that you're in right now watching this? Because this is something that I'm working on with, um, my business now, but honestly, this was a thought process this week about, like really my life, like who I am, but more importantly, like how I'm showing up in who I am. Am I being authentic to who I am? And when the opportunities arise, am I standing strong in who I am and being authentic about the words that I say, the way that I respond you know, how I approach something like, am I standing in the, the core foundation of like who I am? And so it's been real, real thought processes around who am I this week? So I'm bringing the question here so that we can think on it a little deeper, right? Who are you? Who am I is the question. Okay. So specifically in my business, I'm working on, um, building my rebrand of bringing together Rebecca P photography and your connection strategist and being the co-founder of on purpose with purpose. So these are three separate businesses. It is all a foundation of who I am. They all are a piece of me, right? And is who I am being represented well? Am I being received well in who I am in my businesses, right? That's where I'm going with the thought process in this moment. But the deeper thought for me is actually about who I am as a person, not as a business, right? So thinking about who I am, like how does your family perceive who you are? How does your significant other or your children you know, the people that are connected to you on a heart level, how do they perceive you? And, and maybe perceive isn't even the right word because it is, I want to talk about like the truth, like not how it looks like you are, you know, I'm, like I said, photography is my background and I know we can pose certain ways, go in certain angles, have the lighting right so that it's professional and that's great. And I'm talking about who you are. Does it show who you are and how you show up? And, and not only in production or professionalism or photography, right? Like we can do all those and can train ourselves to do things specifically. But when push comes to shove and you're real and authentic and off the cuff and going for things in life, how you approach daily life who are you and how authentic are you showing up in who you are daily right moment to moment who am I so I'm going to leave you with that deeper thought I would love to hear from you in the chat again this is the think on purpose action hour that is a pop-up and um, I would love to hear from you in the comments. So I'm going to turn my screen off. I'm going to go do my intention. I will see you back at 10 to the hour. All right, all right, all right. Here we are at the bottom half of the pop-up sink. 
on purpose hour. And we're talking about who I am, right? Who are you? And my hour was spent deep diving in um, the beyond branding work that I'm doing with my brand strategist, which is yours truly, Susie Simonson, and um, checking out some of the, the work that we've been doing over the past couple months on my personal brand and who I am. And uh, it was interesting because, <clears throat> or OP, that the stuff that was standing out to me was that, um, you know, the idea and the knowledge of being able to show up as yourself 100% of the time, right? Like you knowing that you're being you 100%. And that you know that where you show up, you can be who you are 100%. So that was something that stood out to me in my notes from um, one of my sessions. And that that's super important to know that like, we don't need permission to be heard and seen. Um, like we can use our authentic voice. We can use our authentic style to be seen being fashionable. If we want to be fashionable, being comfortable, if we want to be comfortable, right? Like showing how edgy we are. There's ways to communicate who we are with, um, aesthetics and fashion and style, right? So like knowing that we can authentically be who we are always, isn't that what everyone wants? Um, so that was something that was really, um, is, is like the focus that I'm finding in um, what I'm working through today is like, who are you? And like, are you showing up in that? Are you showing up as yourself? And let's see, there was another piece in here that I was gonna share um, with you which, um, let me see, let me see. Ooh, this was another one. We talk a lot about being in the in-between, right? Sometimes we get in situations where we're like, okay, I won't fully say what I'm thinking because I don't really know how it will be received. And um, like the idea of like being in the in-between of where we are right now and where we want to be, where we're, where we're growing towards, right? Like who we are, but also who we are becoming. So the in-between from where we are now and who we are becoming is the invitation to grow, which we can choose to accept or deny every day by saying yes to something that serves our purpose while simultaneously saying no to the thing that is outside of our alignment, right? I, I love that I found that, um, that it was like a quote from inside of our session. So, I mean, are you being in the in-between moments, right? Sometimes we live in the past too long. Sometimes we're looking too much in the future and we miss what's being, what's, what's in the present moment, what's happening today where we're at with being present. So these are the kind of kinds of conversations I love to have. And um, it fills my soul cup to um, bring these deeper thoughts in this um, idea process moving in our minds. I love mind movement. So let's have some soul conversations. You know, like what are your thoughts around this? Um, how are you in the in-between of who you are right now today? because you are exactly who your world needs today and who you're becoming is the invitation for growth in those in-between moments. So I invite you to grow and stand in your confidence today that who you are is exactly who your world needs. Make it a great day. This is the Think on Purpose with Becky P. Okay, we are having another pop-up Think on Purpose hour. And the thought I want to bring to the table is how are you showing up, right? We've been talking about how you're showing up as who you are, but how does your energy when you show up somewhere 
So for me, energy is something that um, I've now come to realize is a strength for me that, um, you know, I'm the girl that is hyping. I am the one that is bringing energy everywhere I go. Um, and that's because of part of who I am. So I'm curious, like the piece of who you are with your energy, like, how are you presenting yourself? How are you bringing it? How are you bringing it? (laughs) And, um, being able to, you know, that's fully a representation of who you are. So maybe you aren't like me and you really like have a lot of energy and excitement around, you know, hearing from other people or, or being around other people in general, I do get energy from that. So I bring energy because energy matches energy. So I'm curious, what kind of energy do you bring when you go to a meeting, when you go on a Zoom call, when you, maybe, maybe the question is like, what kind of energy do you bring when it is something with more than two people, right? Do you bring a positive energy or a negative energy um, when you know, like there's a specific amount of people, something that I now is coming to me is like, when I've invited to people, I've invited people to an event, um, in the past, what I, what I'm realizing is that people would normally ask like, well, who else is going to be there? And I always have thought like, why does that matter? excuse me, why, why does, why do people ask that? Like who else is coming or, you know, who else is invited? And my thought process has always been like, why, why do you ask the question? Because I am someone that I decide how I'm showing up. Like how will my energy like happen? So it doesn't really matter to me if someone I don't necessarily see eye to eye with is at this event or going to do this thing that I'm doing because I am already going to bring who I am to this project, to this meeting, to this X, Y, Z, right? To this present moment. So in this experience that I've had in the past, it was like, people would ask the question and I've always wondered, why do people wonder? Because um, I guess I've never really found concern because I am responsible for my own, my, my, like my own energy, right? I get to choose if I'm not having fun because of the certain people that are there, I can choose to leave. If I, And I mean, that's in general, if I'm not having fun, I won't stay there. If I feel like there's gross energy or that the people don't have my best in mind, I don't stay there. And that really brings me to realize that not everyone has that um, inner knowing or that awareness that you really can choose moment to moment um, how you want to, how you want to bring your energetic being to Uh, uh, experience and what that can really do for, for the event or for the people that are there too, because energy matches energy. So when we show up with a poo attitude thinking Joe Blow Schmo is going to be there and I don't like him. Well, you're already going with a negative attitude and that stank is on you. So just want to be real that you get to decide how your energy is going into something so that it can be matched. So think of yourself as, mm -hmm, soul conversation here. Think of yourself as a um, thermostat instead of a um, thermometer, right? Thermometer takes the temperature of a room. A thermostat is set to what it's gonna be. So you can set be the set energy of the room, the set temperature of the room and energy matches energy. So if you're up here, the energy is going to get to rise to that level because it gets matched. So I want to challenge you to think about this process and 
getting energy matched and showing up in an energy that you want to be um, received on your end, show up with that. So would love to hear from you what your thoughts are on that. And we're going to go dark and do our intentions. I'll see you back at 10 two. Okay, we're at the bottom of the think hour. And guess what? I have some guests with us this time. So uh, we have Foxy and Sarah with us. And I was discussing, um, I was asking the question of like, so the whole conversation has been about like, who am I? That's the question I've been talking about this, this afternoon is who am I? As in like, who are you? And um, the, ne- the last time I was talking was really asking the question about like, when you're showing up as who you are, how are you, how are you showing up, right? Like what kind of energy are you bringing to the space that you're taking up? Like, I, and I presented the idea of being a thermostat more than a, a, a thermometer because a thermometer comes and gets the temperature. The thermostat is set and everything is set to rise to where you're already set. So, right, energy matches energy is what I've been talking about in here and thinking through the process of like who we are, how we show up and how we can, you know, feel authentic in that. And that, you know, the idea of that, that changes, right? It can change because we're not rainbows and sunshine every day, but when we choose, Mm -hmm. yeah, right? Oh, it's crazy. Why isn't that? No, (laughs) but we can choose differently, right? Um, If, and you know, even in the last couple of days for myself, I've been working through some stuff and I've still been showing up in that so that I can have the opportunity to make a decision of where I want to go from there instead of staying there because I want to go (laughs) I want to go from there um instead of staying so um any thoughts that have came through just in me like catching up on what I've been kind of um bringing to the table this afternoon ladies anything around thermostat or how you show up and who you are I like that you talked about a thermostat and it's, it, got, it made me laugh or chuckle in my head that um, you were talking it, talking about it in the sense of um, a heater, mm, right? Like the temperatures rise to meet where you want. And, and when I think of a, therm- a thermostat, it's always like bringing it down. Mm. So I thought that was kind of, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but um, I think that that is, I mean, that's really what an intention is about. How are you going to show up regardless of what's going on around you? And, um, and so I think that that is, you know, what we practice when we're practicing our intention. How do we want to show up today? How do we want to approach um, any given situation? How do we want to um how do we want to be? Who do we want to be? Um, and, and stuff. So I think that that, um, that all, that's all in alignment with what I practice each day. And, um, do I always show up that way? No, (laughs) but it is something that I am continuing to strive towards Mm -hmm. continuing to practice. I yeah. did not show up that way last night, mm. <laughs> but today's a new day. That was better than maybe the last time. Mm. Yes, I love that you say that because um, that's a huge thing. You know, that is that is like my core thing is showing up with the intention to you know improve. I'm all about growth, and and even if it's just the tiny bit of tweaking to improve thinking about like 1% that's small, that's doable, that's digestible. Um, and, and the idea of, well, I could do better. And, you know, maybe I set the intention to do that. So I love that. And I really like that you pointed out about the thermostat and the fact that you think about bringing it down. I think about bringing it up and I, w- I really wasn't even thinking about like heat, but that's the way that I, you know, talked about it, which is interesting because I bring a lot of energy to everything that I do. So like, I'm always like, people need to get on my level. They need to get up here. 
you know, and then there are people that are like, you're, you're, you're kind of excited. We're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. And like, that's definitely a, a really interesting idea to think about, especially what it's because you guys are in hotter weather than me in Wisconsin, <laughs> but it really does go to show like, the difference in personality of people and how people really, um, their mannerisms or like their personality and just how they show up. And, you know, if, if things need to be a lower, cooler kind of um, mood or if they need the amped up energy uh, to keep moving. You're bringing so, the heat. Bringing the heat. I love it. Okay, well, we're at the top of the hour. I'm going to pause and get some celebrations and set some intentions because guess what? I'm doing a third pop-up think hour. That wasn't on my calendar. I'm in it. I'm in it. Okay. So in, in my intentions, I was, um, reading and something that I was like, okay, I need to get focused on like getting in the zone of like paying attention to what I'm reading and being present with it. And it made me remember that um, I like to use, um, brain music to help me focus just in the background. I just YouTube brain music mm. and, um, it's like, or study music. Um, and it just comes up, it's just instrumental. And I always just like keep it on the background. So that was something that I was like, Oh, I wonder what do you do? Like when you really want to be like deep in thought or really just be present in your thoughts. Um, about like what you're reading or what you're journaling or something like that. Like, is there anything that you guys do um, or a tool or something that you use to help you really um, stay focused in what you're, what you're thinking about? I've actually I mean, done that. Oh, sorry. I've, I've done that music before. I've done searches for that or even like happy music or calming music um, too. But I have a very hard time staying in thought. So I haven't quite figured that out yet. Cause I forgot about doing that actually. So that's a good reminder. Uh, yeah. How about you Foxy? Yeah, I need things quiet cause I get easily distracted. So, um, and another thing that helps me is I talk out loud because if I talk out loud then um, my thoughts tend to stay more on point because in my head, I can have three or four different lines of thought going at the same time, and I'll just switch back and forth between them. Mm -mm. But if I talk out loud, then I hear myself not make sense. And I'll realize that I've changed tracks. Mm -mm. And so um, a lot of the time I talk out loud. And so I'll do it in the car when I'm driving. Um, or, um, or on here. Yeah. Mm. When I talk to myself on my masterminds, mm. yeah. <laughs> um, and so it keeps me, it keeps me more focused in on that specific thing that I'm wanting to talk about. But I mean, I still can just like, I can have a, a thought come in and I'll think that, and then I lose where I was in my previous thought, even yeah. if I'm speaking it out loud. So it's not like foolproof, but, um, when I, when I talk it um, it stays more on the same track. I like that. Yeah. I love that you shared that because, um, you know, that's not something I would naturally like realize that that is a benefit to me, but what's funny is that your chapter I read in my head, like I didn't read out loud. And then I don't know if I'm on like chapter two or three, but whatever I was just reading this one specifically, I was reading it out loud. Um, yesterday and today I was choosing to read it out loud. And um, I also find that when I'm reading it out loud, like I'm staying more on, on track with what I'm understanding <laughs> and um, it, I found it very supportive. So I love that you pointed that out because I didn't even realize that that was something that I did that was, um, different than I, you know, sometimes I don't do it, but sometimes I do. And, um, I also had the music on though, when I was reading out loud. So that's interesting to think about. And, um, I like noise. I'm someone that, um, 
even sleeps with a fan on. Like I like noise. <laughs> so, I, yeah, we have a fan on, but I used to do that and I used to sleep with music. Um, but my husband has to have it quiet, has to have it dark. Mm -mm. And so how I used to sleep is not how I sleep now. Mm -mm. My husband sleeps with an eye mask and ear earplugs. So that was because he, you know, he worked um, overnight and he had to figure it out, but he was actually doing that. I say that. And now I say it out loud and he was actually doing that before he took overnights. And that's why he kind of said yes to it. Cause he's like, I already, you know, I live like that. It doesn't really matter what time of day it is. I can do that. So, but he does sleep with an eye mask and earplugs in because he needs it pitch dark and dead quiet. <laughs> Yeah, my husband sleeps with a pillow over his head. Yeah. What? <laughs> Placed by who? Him. <laughs> that's that's an interesting thought process behind feeling safe when you're sleeping. I don't know. I'd be Do terrified. I'd probably be constantly watching him like I watch the kids for like chest rising. Yeah. <laughs> it's a light pillow. But oh. I mean, like the pillow is not heavy, but, okay. um, but yeah, he does that because then it's darker for him and it, um, you know, it Muffles makes the, noise. The, sound, the sound not as loud too. Interesting. So. That's interesting. And I, 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 you know, my instant thought was like, Oh, that's so shocking. That's so, that's so out, like out of the box to think about putting a pillow over your face. But now that I think about it, my, our son, our middle son has like a little blankie that he like, it's actually like ripped in like two or three pieces, but he's someone that like, he like wraps it, half wraps it just like around the front of him. And I'm always in there checking to make sure he's not like swirling around in his bed, but it's like a comfort thing that it's just like placed on his chest, but it's like on his neck. So it always freaks me out. Um, but you know, my instant thought was like, oh, that's interesting. But, um, yeah, I mean, my kids have some weird, like different things about how they want to sleep and hmm. yeah, know. I've got one kid that's got like five pillows and, um, like five or six stuffed animals. And then I've got another one that's got, you know, um, two or three pillows. And I've got one that's just got like one flat pillow and then um, my seven-year-old will often sleep like curled up or sitting down and leaning over or in all of these really weird positions. And, um, and then my four-year-old will sometimes in the middle of the afternoon or like early evening, he'll go to his bed all on his own and take a nap. Hey. And, um, we'll chalk that as a win. <laughs> Yeah. And, and stuff. And it's, it, none of my other kids did that. Mm -hmm. And then like my oldest super attached to a stuffed animal since he was a baby still sleeps with it. Mm -hmm. The thing is like falling apart. It's been repaired so many times. And my youngest has a blanket that he's really attached to and it's disappearing as strips get torn off and yeah. and stuff but then the other kids don't necessarily have that one thing that they have to have like at all mm -hmm. yeah so it's it's just interesting how they they all vary Every, like how each we are unique about what brings us comfort and how that you know process can continue through you know even being adults and what that what that is that's interesting Okay, well, we are at the top. Oh, we are a minute over and we have momentum coming in. So we're going to stop here.